Good morning, traders, and welcome to the live special trading webinar here with Scott Pulsini, futures trader. Uh, you may have heard of him, uh, and uh, what he's going to go through is live analysis and uh, you know witness uh, trading from professional. Uh, it is in demo paper trading mode, so you know that, but we'll, we'll get into the disclosures here in a minute. Uh, it's not for shadowing. It's about learning uh, how to apply uh, or the insights from uh, a, a professional trader, how they look at the markets and how they use book map and order flow uh, and uh, how they optimize their entries and exits and, and trade management uh, as well as uh, you know trader psychology, et cetera. Uh, let's go through the disclosures. The risk disclosure or general disclosure, uh, all book map limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Uh, our book map simulator comes close to it uh, it, it does read the order book and put you in the queue. Uh, however, if you have real orders, it obviously is going to make a difference. Uh, and uh, the simulator cannot uh, accurately represent that. All right. Risk disclosure. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, good morning, David. Good morning, Tom. Um, all right, well, uh, if you don't know who Scott is, uh, well, he comes in here every Thursday as part of our Bookmap, uh, Bookmap Live education. Uh, it's a very robust education that you get. You get two uh, professional traders as well as uh, forward-looking analysis on the other days. No hindsight education at all, and you have an educational course. So Scott's been trading for over 20 years, uh, and uh, during the years of uh, 2002 to 2005, he was responsible for trading about 10% of the S&P E-mini futures volume every day. It's an amazing amount. It's an amazing story here. Uh, I'm still waiting for Scott to write the script for his Hollywood movie. Um, Scott now focuses uh, on trading both equities and futures. Uh, he's an expert scalper and has been innate ability to quickly read the order flow and volume within price patterns. Uh, here is his contact information. I'm going to be putting this into the chat periodically throughout the webinar. Uh, so he offers mentoring services, educational products. Uh, he has a trading room here. You got his email. Uh, he has an educational course that you can purchase as well. Uh, so this will, all these clickable links will be in the um, chat so uh, you don't have to uh, copy them down here. Okay. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, turn it right over to Scott. Dr. Jeremy? Yes. Screen going here. Open my usual webcam. So no one needs to see me. Not. You're a little faint uh, on the volume. Oh, am I? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mumbling. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Okay. My microphone was unplugged earlier in my trade room and I was talking and no one was hearing me. So that was fun too. Got to figure it out. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, you know, usually on these webinars I do every week, we do it for the Global Plus subscribers or book map. And, you know, I basically just jump right into the trading. You know, stuff is whipping around here, but I, this was supposed to be more of a special event to show like how I, you know, start my morning or break down my morning and break down the markets for myself and my trade room and stuff like that so we'll quickly go over that uh it's going to be kind of torture for me trying to do that <laughs> if there's stuff firing off but uh i will do that just so we can everyone get a sense of you know how i prepare for the day and what i look at and stuff like that so um you know we we start the morning uh, i get in i get on well i get up about five o'clock my time, which is seven o'clock central. And um, that's if I don't have trades on overnight, which usually kills me to sleep wise, but uh, I'll get up about five and I'll look at these markets just so I have an idea of what I'm talking about on my, 
in my trade room and then we get on the trade room and we go through uh first and foremost we go to the go over the state of these markets right so we go over market structure so i'll bring up a bar chart a uh, candlestick chart like this and um you know my whole trading philosophy and it should be anyone's as far as one of one of the things that you use is obviously market structure and <clears throat> balance areas and you know so markets trade in, in two states they're either balancing meaning they're trading back and forth right so we call that balance areas right so i'll draw a dude here so this is back and forth trade, right? So when you see back and forth trade like this, and you can get balances inside of bigger balances, right? So like for instance, this is one big balance that we're in right now. This was a balance here inside the balance. This was a balance here inside of a balance and we broke down just to the bottom, came back. Now we're approaching this little guy here. But anyway, this is two-sided trade. So the way you look at this is traders placing bets on next which way we break next right so some guys are short some guys are long when we break out of this if we break out this way the guys that are short the longer term traders and even you know you, you have so many different um facets of traders in here where yeah you have longer term traders where when they we break out of here they have to cover their shorts so they they are fuel for the move out of here then you got guys that are shorter term traders like day traders that love to play breakouts of balance areas because balance areas are pretty obvious to see right you can anyone can see two-sided trade so they love to jump on when we break out knowing that you know there's going to be some type of move because traders have to puke the bigger longer term guys have to puke out their positions <clears throat> so it's very important that you know where we are on a bigger time frame before you start throwing in your trade and i'm telling you most traders i'd say 90 percent of traders hop on in the day and they have something like this up probably even less than this most of them just have like the one minute chart and they just start throwing in trades based on what they see here well just because you know for instance this looks bullish right now you know we had a failed breakdown which we will talk about one of my favorite trades where we had overnight balance and we tried to break down and then we recovered and we recovered the high volume node of a, of a, of a value uh, balance area which i will go over um that's very bullish right but in the grand scheme of things is this market very bullish right now no it's not very bullish right now this is still actually um intermediate it's short term bullish intermediate term this is bearish long term it's bullish intermediate term it's bearish right why is it bearish intermediate term this is stuff that you guys as traders need to know before you just start buying like it's we're going up here right this was a you can see the dates down here it's a multi-week balance area right and we tried to break out and if this thing was truly bullish we would have held up here you see this balance built right here and we just would have kept moving up what happened not only did we break down out of this little guy, then we when we gapped right here, right through the high volume node of this balance area. The high volume node in a balance area is HVN, we call it, is basically just where the most trade transacted inside of a balance area, right? We gapped down through that, then we built balance at the lower edge of this balance area, right? And then we broke down. So a market is still considered bearish and i'm going to give you a perfect example of this in crude here that's just starting to fall apart like we talked about in my room today but a market could still remain bearish even on retest of number one the bottom of balance prior balance right many times it'll do that Let me clear this out a little bit so that's the first line of defense for for bears right we can return here and you can see we came back and we kind of i mean this is this is pretty condensed so this is like you know 30 30 40 points that we pulled back after we came back to this guy here right and then we got back up here and we were talking in the room this is the high volume note and i said this was last week where if we get above 4180 and that's this price right here then this thing is going to be now a fail breakdown and then we're going to rip and what did it do it held right where it should have held and now we sold off now what are we doing well we're rallying back but we're still not out of the woods as far as this not being bearish anymore and then what what are we doing now we're building another balance right so all we're really doing is starting to come back to the top of the balance so yes you could play you know tra first of all the worst place to be putting on trades is in the middle of balance areas right and that's exactly where we're at right now why is that the worst place because again that's where the most trade occurred so you're asking you're probably going to get this kind of trade 
where you're going to be whipsawed to death and just be tortured. Even if you end up being right, you're going to be tortured for hours, usually. That would be long old. This is going to kill me to do this real quick, but hopefully I don't miss too many trades. So anyway, um, we are, I forgot what I was saying here, but balancing right here and you don't want to be putting on trades in the middle of balance areas if you can avoid it, right? So the best place to place trades are tops and bottoms of balance areas, right? Those are the best places, right? So if you would have gotten long here, I mean, this wasn't a balance area at the time, but this one definitely was, right? When we came back down, that was a great long if you get the right signal and, and then you ride it up. But right here to put on a trade, yeah, you can put on a trade hoping we get to the top of this balance. It doesn't have to happen, um, but we are right in the middle of a balance area. So anyway, the best places to trade are tops and bottoms of balance areas, or if we break out, or if we break out and then retest, either like we just said from this, this direction, if we retest the bottom or retest the high volume node, then you can be trading the high volume node on the retest, yeah, this way or this way, right? So other than that, you don't really wanna be participating in the middle of balance areas. So that's the way we look, I look at these markets. We I figure out where the balance areas are, I figure out, what is the state of the market um, currently? So I'll look at the longer term stuff to know, again, if you know longer term stuff, you're not thinking this is all rosy yet, right? You're like, okay, yeah, this short term chart looks like we're going on the moon, but you know, based on what I just showed you, um, you know, we still need to go, go higher. We need to get above 4180 for this to be truly bullish. We'll violate that H high volume node, HVN of that other balance I just showed you. Other important areas we look at, areas of directional conviction. You see, this is where this whole move started down from the other day. So you can bet when we get up here, there's going to be some type, at least a little bit of resistance, or if not, just a complete failure, right? So this is stuff you guys have to know before you just blindly throw on trades. You got to say, okay, hey, yeah, this looks like we're going on the move, but wait a second, we're in an area where we broke down hard from on um, whatever day this was, Monday or Tuesday. So those are other areas that you pay attention to, right? And usually I'll have zones drawn and this is pretty close. This was an older zone, but you can see how it's still, it's still effective for all these other things. So this zone is important that we're touching right now, right? So that's the very basic sense. You wanna know where we're at in the marketplace, right? So that's number one that I look at. Number two, I'll go to market profile, right? And that just gives you a, a different type of view. It, it's kind of the same concept but it's a different view this is something different that i'm going to introduce today we'll get to that here in a second um so we go to market profile right this is market profile so again forgive me if you've been on these webinars i say the same stuff every time but um there's probably a lot of new guys on here so market profile is basically it's a Market profile is usually individual days. Like yesterday, this was yesterday's market profile. And all this was was the trade per period. So if I go like this, you can see that you can see it broken out by the half hour periods, right? So that's all this is. Usually sometimes some market profile they have the letters, like the original ones had the letters. I don't need the letters. I just all I need to see is this. And you can kind of see how how the day progressed, right? So we started down here, we kind of flirted with this old one down here, and then we got out of it, and then Usually when, when markets break out of or they struggle at uh, prior uh, value areas, the tendency once they get out is to go to the next one. And that's exactly what we did. We broke out of this guy and we came right up to this guy, right? So this was from before. And again, I'll get into what these are, these composites. But usually when you trade through it a bunch of times, you can you can cut it off. You see, I cut off this one here because we traded through, traded through. I'll cut them off because they're not relevant anymore. It's just like a support and resistance line, right? If you have a if you have a resistance line and you trade through it five times, it, it's not relevant anymore. So same with market profiles because you're always building new value, right? So, um, <clears throat> but anyway, I kept this one in just because it still remained important. You can see yesterday we couldn't get in it, and then yesterday we opened in it, and what do we do? right through it and now we're retesting this most recent one so this is a really important area for yes yes it's in the middle of that balance area but we're also this is just a different look right now we're coming to the top or the bottom of this most recent composite value area and i'll get into that one second so what's going to happen here are we going to reject this or are we going to accept inside and when you accept inside a value area the tendency is to go to the other side so quickly there's a lot of confusion with my terms right so if i say value area let's see my awesome spelling on the computer value area is for market profile and that's this stuff 
So all it means is it's where 70% of the trade occurred in this guy here. That's a value area. If I say balance area, uh, that's this stuff, what we just talked about, right? So don't confuse the two. They're, sometimes they're closely related, other times they're not, right? This is a balance area, balancing back and forth. You can call it, people call it boxes, people call it consolidation, whatever you wanna call it, it doesn't matter, it's two-sided trade. But I call it balance area on bar charts and I call it value area on market profiles, so don't get those confused. Um, so now, so this is an individual day, so we'll get this back to normal. So what I do for these market profiles is, oh, we'll undo this one here. So if the days merge, the value areas of the individual days overlap, I will merge the days together and then draw a composite value area, right? So this was yesterday's value area just for the day, right? And then the point of control is where the most trade occurred. You can see this is where this juts out. This is where the most trade occurred in this, in this, value area right so to give you all all these are for anyone that took statistics in high school or college all this is is a statistical distribution that's all this is turned upside down or it's on a side that's all it is right so you learn in statistics that there's a um they don't call it value area obviously I, I forgot what this is even called the distribution or whatever and then you have the tails the so anyway usually this is 70 percent of it's been a long time since I was in college, by the way, so that's why I don't know the terms. But anyway, this is where 70% of whatever you're looking at occur. It's the same exact thing turned on its side for a market profile. That's all it is. Very basic. I like very basic in my trading because it helps me not be confused with all these conflicting signals, right? So when the value areas of multiple days overlap at least 50%, you know, this day versus this day, I will merge them. Right, so you can see what this looks like. We do this day right here. Uh, where are we at? Merge with pro, pro, pro. This is Sierra chart, by the way. Um, very cheap, like 35 bucks a month I pay. Uh, again, you want to cut costs as much as you can. You don't need to pay, be paying for a bunch of stuff that, that you can get for cheaper, right? And Sierra chart's cheap, but it's very, very labor, <laughs> labor intensive. So just be, pre be prepared to do everything yourself. And I mean everything. When you get first get it, from building your charts to constructing candlestick it's 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 a little insane but you know you get what you pay for so that's it's a great it's a great um software but you got to do everything yourself this is think or swim this is free as well if you open an account with think or swim i think you can put 100 bucks in there whatever it is and you get access to this to this stuff right there's no reason to be paying for charting when you can get it for free use your money for your trading not for stuff that you can get for free so anyway I merged these two days and that and that came up with this value area, right? And then if you look, then you're like, oh wait a second, this 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 guy overlapped this guy. Okay, I'm gonna merge. I can merge those. Again, it has to be 50%, and that was about 50% of this value area overlap 50% of this value area. So I will merge that as well. So you merge those. And then you come up with a nice little composite, and you can see. That's right where we're at right now. So this goes for anything. This goes for anything that's traded. Cars, houses, you can do this with prices of houses, prices of cars, it doesn't matter. It's what the market perceives as, va as value. That's all it is, right? And it's important to know. So we, this what, this, this these are the prices that market con considered value back, you know, earlier in the week or last week. And we, then the market said, you know what? This is not value anymore. We're gonna move down here. Right, and then now we're coming back. Now, does the market think this is value again, where we're gonna to go to the other side, or is it gonna reject it? That's how I use this stuff, right? And then when you layer this over with your, or my, um, you know, balance area uh, analysis, then you come up with great trade. So you can see here that we just saw, we're right at the bottom of that value area. That's also confluent with what? Where this whole directional conviction started at the end of the day, the other day. So this is a very important area. If we get through there, then you could be looking for longs. If we do not, you can be looking for shorts because now we're far enough away from this failed breakdown anyway. So what we what we harp in my room is you do not want to be standing in front of, so say you like this area for a short, right? And you said, hey, this thing this thing broke down the other day. I know we're at that market profile value very low. I, I want a short here. Well, if you 
if we build balance here for the next two hours, right, what is balance? Well, balance are traders placing bets. If once we break out of the balance area, you do not want to be standing in front of that breakout of that balance area because you've got all this energy of guys that are going to be puking out their positions, meaning covering their positions because they're wrong, right? You, that is not what you want to stand in front of in trying to play this prior zone, right? That's the difference between a straight beeline move right into the zone. Those fail all the time. So do you see the difference? You have to know how we got to this zone. Is it we built balance right below it and now we're, you don't want to be shorting that zone versus what we're doing right now is a straight beeline move, 40 points right into this move. So I will, and then again, then you start to overlay the market profile and the other stuff that I'm going to show you and you come up with a thesis on what's going on. And then the final piece of the puzzle is then you go to your book map real time volume, which is the, the biggest thing out of everything, because it doesn't matter what lines are on a chart, doesn't matter. Any of that stuff doesn't matter as strongly as the book map real time volume to know what is going on right now. Right. So you want to know, hey, is is there big money defending this area? Is there big money? And you can see here when we came up here. Again, I'm not going to get into this yet, but this was large sell ice two different and you can see the absorption here these black dots are the absorption sell ice meaning big money was is trying to hold the market down right here and it ripped right through them and this is the exact scenario so if you wanted to be long here per se this is a bullish setup right here where it ran right over the this icebergs moved away retested the area failed and now is moving back up right so in a vacuum which you never want to trade in but if you were just if i was just looking at this chart alone i would say this is very bullish right now because paper got run over the big money got run over trying to hold the market down moved away this is the pattern 90 percent of the time where it retests that area these guys that got are were run over now they have to exit their positions because they were wrong how do i know that because i'm again i apologize if you're not these webinars i say the same thing every time i used to be this guy i used to be the guy that got run over and i would be praying to the lord almighty please come back to my area where i can get out of this trade i won't even take a profit i just want to break even please god please god please god i would be looking at my p and l i'd be ticking down like 110,000, 120,000. my my uh, risk manager would be calling me on the phone that would that was always fun too you're trying to concentrate you're you're crapping your pants part my language and then you got the guy calling you on the phone hey what's going on i'm gonna cut you off here blah 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 so anyway what i would do this would move far enough away from me say this is me that got short right i got 1500 contracts on and i'm praying please come back to my area just so i can cover these and then we'll come back and that's what causes as i would cover because it's 1500 contracts it causes the next move out right so that's what my setups in my si indicator course are based off of they're based off of personal experience of me trading large size and seeing how other traders reacted to with trading large size and being caught and things like that because back then you were able to see counterparty so i could see exactly who i was trading with back then i can tell if it was a local meaning like a like a day trader that worked for a firm and you'd see the same guys every day it was literally like a poker game it was like sitting at a poker table and you can see the guy you're trading with you knew how much size he can put on right so i used to trade against this guy from uh, gelber he could put on like five thousand contracts like it, it was insanity right so i but i, I can see trading with him like when he was loaded up and wrong right so but and then there'd be other times i'd be trading and all of a sudden i'd see a house i'd never see a house meaning a house number so i'd see like you know 014 as the everyone had our, our ours was oh i can't remember what it was 023 that's just basically your clearing firm number and i would see a clearing firm number i've never seen before and i, I like i would jump up and buy a thousand and it would all be this number and i'd be like hmm that's not gonna be good like that's some serious money that's in here. I've never seen that number before. I probably want to get out of these out of the market here because I don't want to be. It's not a local that I can just mess around with and play poker with. This is this is serious money. I want to get out of this trade. So anyway, that's how the setups are that in my course is, but from my experience as a large term trader. So this stuff is not hypothetical. It's not, it's real stuff that I used to do and how I would react when I was caught. Right. So anyway, I don't want to dive into this too much, especially if stuff fires off right now. We'll get into that with some live trades. I'm hoping the second half hour here will be live trades. I don't know if I'll be able to cover everything that quickly at all. But anyway, so that's what I look at. Then we go to the real-time buy-in. So some other things that I've added, again, I am a huge proponent of not taking away, you should be taking away things off of your chart, not adding. 
Um, you know, there's a guy in the room yesterday, he posted his chart, there's 5,000 lines on his chart. It's like you cannot make clear, concise decisions if you have all of this conflicting information, right? You know, guys have um, Fibonacci and then they have Bollinger Bands and they have the the MACD and all this other crap. You know, again, st anything can be, anything is works once in a while, but you do not want stuff that's not that important in the grand scheme of things to affect your decision making, whether you're getting in or getting out, because you're never gonna hold on for the big trade. If you've got 55 things on your chart telling you, one thing's telling you to stay long, another thing's telling you to get short. So I'm telling you guys, bare bones, keep it as simple, keep it stupid, kiss, right? Keep it stupid, simple. So I've always been a big proponent of very, very little on my charts. This is, and this is stuff is the most basic that you get, market profile and value areas. And I mean, a balance areas and candlestick charts, right? And then I'll draw the zones. That's about as basic as it gets. And that's all I really want. I have added two things that are, well, three things. I use TAS, Everyone, most of you guys know that. TAS are just mini market profiles, right? And they're very helpful. I use them on a, a 10, a 30 and a 60 minute, um, 60 minute time frame. So I use those and when they draw boxes, it's just like those values I just showed you on the market profile, right? And you just get a sense of, hey, are we breaking out? Are we, you know, are we are we below, whatever. And then Taz also has what's called market map, so you can see where all the volume is. Um, it's an easier way to look at it, but you can also just look at a balance area and know there's a lot of volume in a balance area, right? So when I look at the, for instance, the five minute, right? I know, you know, yesterday, this balance area, you can see this choppy nonsense back and forth, right? I know there's a lot of volume in there because it, it's a balance area. Right. And then when we break out, it's gone. And you can see here, try to break out. What are we we retested? High volume node held gone. And then that caused also a, a failed breakdown of this guy, too. I don't I'm not going to get in that right now. I'll, I'll go over the strategy a little bit here shortly. But. Um, oh, so I was talking about market map for think for um, for Taz. So I, that's how I use Taz. Very powerful. And then they had another product called the Edge. I'll go over that, too. Um, but the the newest the two newest things that I've added in the trade room, we're, we use them all the time and they're loving it. Um, the one, this is on Thinkorswim, uh, just this is a free study. Very, very, very powerful in context, not in a vacuum, not trading by itself. So guys, nothing, guys and girls, nothing I use do I trade in a vacuum and not even book map. I do not use my setups. I trade off five distinct setups like we were talking about. So this one, for instance, this setup is called broken ice. This is, we just talked about this, right? Iceberg, sell ice, big money, got run over, broken ice, retest, fail, that's the signal. Do I trade this by itself? Absolutely not. I go back and I look and see where we are in the grand scheme of things like we just covered. So if everything matches up, then I will take the trade. If that is not um, confluent with my thesis for the day, so say if I, so say I wanna be short, and this fires off. This is a long. This is a bullish setup. If I want to be short, I'm, if I from what I see, I should be short. I'm not taking a long, right? That's why every time every webinar you guys see me do, I'm like, this looks like a long, but I I don't want to be long here. I'm not going long in this market today until something changes, right? So I don't even trade this in a vacuum. And this is the most powerful thing I have ever seen. I don't know if you guys ever heard me say that, or or about five million times. This stuff is the most powerful stuff I've ever seen in my 20 plus years of trading. And I don't even use this in a vacuum. Right. So you especially don't want to be learning about this stuff and trading on this stuff by itself because you will get smoked. Right. So <clears throat> I use this in context. So if I were long, I look at stuff like this and say, wow, yeah, this is the we call this algo guy in my room. Right. All this is is a it's called a moving average ribbon. And I actually learned about this from one of the one of the traders I was uh, mentoring last year. I never again because I never would use any of this stuff because I didn't want to confuse myself. But he showed me it, and I'm like, the more I watched it, I'm like, you know what, this thing is pretty valid. So the way this this way this works is again, this is called a moving average ribbon. If you go to um, you know you get thicker swim, and again, if you're part of my room, I, I share my template for my um, for my workspace, so you get all the exact charts I use, and then they just download these. They don't really like it because they download them. I have about 45 charts but they, they get this as well, so they don't have to construct it themselves. But anyway, if you go here, I don't even know if I can find it right now, but 
I'm not going to waste time on that. But anyway, you can find it studies. It's just a basic study. So all this is showing you it's a moving average ribbon band. The blue is a short term moving average and it's got different um, periods and the red is a longer term moving average. How traders use this or how, how you'd want to use this if you start watching it is when the blue crosses over the red and pull, so the market pulls the blue over the red. That is a great time to get long again in context with other stuff. You don't want to just be doing it on its own. You can see here you would have been, you know, over these areas you would have been ripped up, right? So, I mean, you did get some moves when the blue crossed below the red here, but then this is another signal I'll tell you about here, but we tried, tried. So, you know, it, it can get choppy at times is what I'm saying. So you can't just trade this every time. Oh, this is, it's not this easy, right? You know, oh, here we got to cross the blue, the red. Okay, I'm going to buy a 4,100 and I'm, I'm just going to hold it till I see it cross the blue back below the red. So, yeah, a lot of times you will get huge trending moves like this, but my point is you can't use this in a vacuum. So some of the ways that we use this in the room, one is just to confirm, you know, so if we see a, a SI indicator set up, say we're at balance, say, here, here's a perfect example how you would use this today, right? So what price was this? This was right around 4,100, 4, right? 40, yeah, 4,000 or 4,100. So we were just talking about this. This was... Today, this, this was last night, right? Last night's trade. Again, the the Globex trade, extended hours trade, they call it Globex, is important until it's not important anymore. So now it's not important as the regular session, but this was a failed breakdown. This is one of my favorite trades. We broke down out of this balance area. Then we came back, built a little balance here, and then we recovered and got right through the high volume note of this balance area. That is a total long signal. So when that happened, granted it was a little higher than 4,100, but you would have been on alert, like, okay, I'm watching my, I'm watching Algo guy, Algo guy just crossed. Again, you're not trading this by itself, right? Right, everybody? But you're watching this, you're like, okay, this just crossed, so I know I got the Algos that trade this exact set, this exact thing, they're on my side. Now what am I waiting for? Now I'm gonna see if we, if we have a fail breakdown and once we get above this high volume note of this, of this fail breakdown, it's go time on the long side, right? As long as I got a volume signal. So then you wait. Now you know we had a fail breakdown. You know algo guys in your favor. You look at um, you look at your volume and you wait for a real time volume setup. You get that. Then there's just no questions and you put the trade on and you catch a 40 point trade, right? I of course did not catch that trade because I was not in front of my screen. So that's the other thing I use. And then the, well, the newest thing that I've added. <clears throat> just added this in the last couple of days. I'm not, I don't claim to be an expert at it as, at all, but that being said, so I, I've done mentoring for almost a year and a half now. And one of my students was a micro trader a year ago. Then he started trading a couple lots and he was trading five lots and we had, I had some mentoring with him. I, again, I'm not taking full credit for his explosion, but uh, you know, he learned, he bought my course, he learned the setups. Then he started using stuff like this. These are called Lud Ludwig levels, L-U-D. I'll show you the website here quickly. But I'm, the reason I'm showing you this again, I, I, if I'm showing you something, you know it's probably worthwhile because I hate putting additional things on my chart. This is the website. You can go there, uh, free day trial. Anyway, he, from February until now, he's made almost $2 million, $2 million. He's in my trade room as well, and he's always posting in there, so you guys can learn from him there as well. But he absolutely swears by these levels, swears by them. So they're not the same as Taz, that she has her own formula, she's a computer programmer. And this was telling, I spoke to her a couple of days ago because I, I wanted to see if I can get a discount from my room, uh, which we got. Um, so again, if you join my room, you get discounts on this as well. But she told me that she has been in business since 2010 and most of her customers have been with her the entire time. So if that doesn't tell you something about the levels, you're not holding customers for 10 years if they don't work, right? So I consider this kind of a hidden hidden gem because I've never heard of it, right? And I've been trading for 20 years, but my you know my my student, you know, now obviously he's much more than a student. He's made millions of dollars. He swears by these levels. Again, you're not trading this in a vacuum either, but you can see how well these work as far as support and resistance, right? This was yesterday too. You can see like the yellow line, 
the way they talk about it is, again, I'm brand new to using them, but just watching them for the last day or two, they're ridiculous. When, again, when applied to the other stuff, but when we get above the yellow line, the tendency is to get to the red or this, whatever color this line is, and it did that. And then you see it bounced off again, and then we bounced off the red, and they're incredible. And then today, this is exactly where we bounce. So this is a perfect example of using everything confluent, right? So we just talked about the fail breakdown. We talked about algo guy crossing. Then you say, hey, the Ludwig level held, both of these levels held. I want to be long, and I really want to be long once we cross the, to the yellow. And you catch, and you could even add it per se. So say once we cross the yellow, you get a, a book map volume signal, then you can add to it, that, those types of things. And these are your targets. And you can see we went right here, and now, we, now we're above it. And then it, these are dynamic too. It will draw new levels. So new levels should be drawn here shortly. But again, I, if I'm showing you something, you want, might, might want to pay attention to it because I do not just randomly add stuff to my to my trading and but i'm just telling you this guy that has showed the whole room these everyone's very excited about it and he, he's made two million bucks in the last three months so he, he 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 can't stop talking about it so anyway that's the other thing that i use so <clears throat> quickly now i can take some uh questions here bruce while i catch my breath so i use you know just recap bar charts number one figure out structure Market profile, number two, figure out structure, figure out where we are value-wise. TAS, TAS stuff, because there are many market profiles, I like to see them on a smaller time frame, and I like to see the market map to see where the volume is. That's number three. Number four is uh, I use algo guy, call him algo guy in the room. Very, very powerful in use, used in context, like I said. And then number four is the Ludwig, Ludwig level. We call them lugs in the room now um, because I can't say Ludwig level every time I refer to it. Um, those are the things that I use. And, and, and when you can get all those things aligned and then you get your real-time volume, again, the most important thing you can do because this is what's really happening and you, what's happening right here, guys. Look at this, 2,500 icebergs right here fighting this. So they tried to fight it here, wrong. Now they're doing it again. Where are we at? See how this stuff's starting to line up? So here, let's, let's just quickly do this. We'll do this real-time. We'll probably put on a trade here, right? Again, I know I said we're in the middle of a balance area, but there's enough here to go short. Now watch this retest. If this retest fails, this is the pattern right here. I will short this and then we'll go into why I'm shorting it. Huge ice, failure. Move at least three to four points below the zone, three points, retest. If I see red, I'm getting in, my stop goes above here. I'm gonna go three points above there. So let's get this set up. I get my account set up as well. Okay. Once I put this on, again, you don't just put it on on the retest. You want to see it start to fail, right? I don't know why that keeps staying black on me. So you come here, you want to see this start to move away a little bit. I got this too expanded. I want to keep it kind of, right? So meaning you don't want to just wait and just blindly short. I'm going to short this right now because you see the selling coming in, right? All right, so I'm short that. I'm going three points above here. Actually, I'm going to go above both of these spot gamma levels. So it's going to be a little wider not much, like, you know, three and a half, four points. Oh, and that, I also use spot gamma levels. I'll get into that as well. Um, those are just basically support. It's not, they're not basic. They're very powerful as well, um, but they are, and he does a bunch of webinars for um, Bookmap as well, but it, all it is is he does uh, analysis on options traders, the big, you know, S the S&P market, ES market is the biggest options market on the planet. So he, the way he, he analyzes, what the options dealers are doing, and he knows where the biggest positions are for these options dealers, where they have to hedge their their options positions with futures. So these aren't just imaginary support and resistance, just you know, random lines on a chart. You know, options dealers are going to be participating at these levels because they have to cover, they have to hedge their positions, right, or their options positions. So the way you use these in the most basic sense, I use them, is, you know, until we get here, like we get up there, these are resistance until we get above and then there's support, right? Because you know the dealers are gonna be hedging positions there. <clears throat> so I'll get into that here in a second. Uh, I just wanna go over why I took this trade. There's enough to go to give this a short try where this could turn around and, and soft the other way. One, the only thing that worries me with these newer levels is we're still above this Ludwig lug. lug. That's the only thing that's worrying me um, about this trade because I've seen how powerful this is. I would love to see this get below this and then we're coming back down here or at least to the yellow. Okay, so 
that one's not completely agreeing, but that doesn't mean, again, that's just one piece of my puzzle. It doesn't mean I'm not putting it on the tray, right? The biggest thing is two big things. We are at, we are failing to puncture into this prior value where we gap down from yesterday, right? This is exactly where we gap down from this value area. We are having trouble getting inside here. A lot of times it'll do that, right? So I already had that in my mind. So this is, for example, showing how some things are against me, but my, my, my strongest things I look at are, this looks like a good trade. The second thing is, what do you see here? Yes, we're pretty much in the middle of this bigger balance. And this is what I do with my trade room all the time. I make them answer and, and then we call verbal lashings. If they get stuff wrong, then I'll, then I'll rip them. And if they put bad trades in the room, they get ripped too. It's half funny, half serious. Like I rip them to make them better traders, right? My room is not a sugar coating room. Like you guys are great. It's why did you do that? What are you thinking? Did you not learn what I just talked about? So it's actually a very good learning experience because in neuroscience, that's called a um, an anchor, right? Like if you get humiliated, <laughs> you're you're gonna remember that you're gonna remember the lesson, right? So anyway, I don't even know why I just started talking about that, but anyway, this is a straight B line move one into that market profile two. This is where we broke down from. That where I showed you that in that five minute chart, that was um, directional conviction area. You see it, and this was a prior balance. This is the bottom of balance. So markets can return to the bottom of balance and do that. They can return to the high volume node and do that. If it got through this, then I'll be watching closely again because now we're through the high volume node of this guy. Again, 4180 is my price. This is the high volume node probably right there, right? Then I'll be looking long. Right now, I will still take shorts, right? So, I, you know, I, I'm still bearish this market based on what I showed you guys. Fail breakout, boom. Now we're returning. We got through the, the bottom of this guy and now we're at the high volume node. Well, we did it once, right? We couldn't get through and now we're doing it again. And now we're coming back to this balance area. So this could easily turn over and sell right back down. And that's what I'm making on. And then the final piece is um, the volume and we got the volume signal, right? So I know two different times in this area, paper, big money, much bigger than my six lot is stepping up to trade this market, right? I mean, to, to stop this market. You got this, this, and now 2,500 right here. Are they going to get run over again? If it does that, then possibly look long. Again, I don't really want to be long until we're over 4,180. What's most likely? We do this, and then we do this. At least come back and retest this zone, and maybe back down through that zone too, and then maybe hopefully we'll get some new stuff and then add to the trade while we're on here. So here's a perfect example. Like everything is not aligned in this trade, right? My two, my my three strongest things are aligned: market profile, my um, my balance area stuff on the bar charts. And then, um, and obviously the strongest thing is the book map uh, SI indicator volume. What's not aligned? Well, Algo guy is not telling me right now that this isn't anywhere close to being bearish, which is fine. You not, I'm not taking, I'll pay attention to this, but I'm not, not taking a trade based on this because so many times this, this thing, if this thing starts selling off, it'll pull that blue right below the red. Then you know you're really in, then I know I really have the wind at my back because these algos will be selling it. But I don't, I don't, I don't not take a trade if that's a proper sentence because just because of algo, guy, right? So we know we're above the Ludwig level and we know algo guy's not agreeing. I still will take the trade. There's enough here to give this this trade a shot because if this is right, this could be a 40 trade down, 40 point trade down, right? And I'm only risking, I'm risking like six points on this trade. That's nothing, six and a half points. Right, so I'm basically risking six, six points in my mind. If this is correct thesis and this gets rolling back down, this could be risking six to make 40. What's that? That's almost seven to one on your money. That's seven. So if I take this trade seven times, I can be wrong five out of seven, right? So do the math here. <clears throat> this is all the time. So if I take, so I'm risking six points when I'm wrong. Hypothetically, just say let's go. This goes 43 points, right? Seven, seven times. So this is a seven times risk on my trade. I can be wrong two, three, four, five, even six times. Let's say five times. So I can be wrong five out of seven times, which is just trying to make me wrong right now. But I can. So if I'm wrong five times, I lose 30 ticks or 30 points, I should say. When I'm right, I make 43. That's still a 13 point winner. And I was wrong, a 13 point profit 
not counting commission and everything, right? But um, still up 13 points, and I was wrong five out of seven times. That's how I trade, and that's what I stress to you guys, how you should trade as well and not be scalping one for one, even two to one. Two to one's better, but one to one, you're not going to make it in this game. I'm just telling you, you're competing against computers, and you're going to just churn your commission. You're going to churn your account down with commission. So let's see if I get my usual stop out to the tick here, and then I will reassess right through this area. <clears throat> Again, if I lose this, that's fine. If this comes back down, I'll give it another shot. It still has some work to do for me to, to turn bullish on this market. You can see where we're at here. And what do we say? A market re can remain bearish up until the high volume. So right now we're just testing the bottom of this prior balance that we just broke down from, right? This is just the bottom of it. We can even come up to here. And that's like 40, 4150 something. And I'll still take a short, right? So this will be the second time paper is going to be wrong. Again, I give it, I usually give the, uh, not usually, I'll, I'll give my, to prove this zone invalid, it needs to go at least four points above it, right? It hasn't happened yet, but I'm just waiting to stop to the tech and then we'll, we'll reassess. So any questions, Bruce, while I catch my breath? Um, not too much. I mean, I, I, I just want to, uh, for the, there's a lot of newer traders in here. Uh, and you know, well, welcome to the webinar. But like um, Scott went through um, his kind of process in in detail before getting to Bookmap, and he's using I, because it's just kind of funny. Like a, a, this is a Bookmap webinar, uh, and uh, you're so accustomed to uh, using Bookmap uh, that you went through in detail all these other things. Um, whereas like, uh, you know, learning the order flow and and, and using Bookmap uh, for the trading was kind of um, kind of left out. Um, uh, but I, I just wanted to mention like, like some of these things and, um, like looking at that, uh, uh, newer tool, uh, if you can verify that in book map by just looking at the volume, uh, you know, and, and, and the order book, like, uh, uh, when you see these moves straight up like that, um, and it's on high volume and you see the big volume dots like that, I mean, that's telling you something, right? Uh, it's telling you a lot. Uh, uh, and, um. Uh, uh, then, then you know, Scott is looking at Bookmap here for very specific things for getting involved uh, in the trade, like the stops and icebergs here, uh, along with the kind of bigger picture market structure. Right. Yeah. I mean, again, the volume is the key, and you can see a lot of that stuff, like Bruce said, with the you know, with the size of the bubbles and stuff like that. I don't really use the size of the bubbles. How I use bubbles is how when I see them coming back into zones like this, and then if I see the red, meaning market, all the bubbles are our market orders, right? Guys that are aggressively going into the market. So if I see the move away from my zone or retest, and then I see red, that's my signal to get in, right? I do look at the bigger bubbles, but I'm more focused on this stuff here. But yeah, the newer traders, don't be confused. I mean, this webinar was supposed to be how I prepare for the market. So I'm not trying to confuse you guys, but. It's pretty basic stuff. I mean, I use a couple of little indicators, you know, but other than that. I no, I mean, it's just you're, you're so used to uh, um, using Bookmap um, that uh, it's like, oh, and then I look at Bookmap. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> well, and, and like, but uh, I also like, said, well, that's the most that's, important part. The real yeah, yeah, yeah. Volume, but, Bookmap is by far the most important part. You don't trade the stuff in a vacuum, but nothing is more important, guys, than the real time volume. I don't care where we're at. I don't care if it's a, Lug, Ludwig level. I don't care if it's market profile. I don't care if it's a Fibonacci, a Bollinger Band. It, though they they only matter when the real time volume is participating there. The the big traders are participating there, participating there, or not participating there. That's a whole nother strategy where you come up to a big level, and you don't see anything going on, right? So again, I, I, if that came across like book map, oh yeah, book map. No, I mean obviously you guys know for anyone who's no, no, the I, owner, even the newer if, traders. If, if the newer traders uh, uh, might be a little confused, that's all. Um, uh, I mean, like, for example, there's the on chart indicator there, um, uh, Scott, like there's 3000 there that, that traded and that were executed, fully executed. That iceberg was fully executed. And then there was one before that as well, uh, for right. 3000, but it was over a bit of time. It wasn't like a huge spike like that. Right. Uh, so few, let me go over that as well. So this on, this on chart iceberg is, is different in a sense from this, right? So this graph. Is different from this that what this graph shows you is net net icebergs right so the example i always give so we can come up to an area and there can be a thousand buy icebergs right and a thousand sell icebergs 
well, on the graph, it's going to show you zero. That's not helpful to me, right? I need to know because, again, it's not always what paper's doing. It's the area. You know, that's what I want to know is the area and how it reacts to the area, right? So I want to know there's 2,000 icebergs there. So that was one of my main problems with the SI indicator. If there were, you know, there were very few because it's the most powerful thing I've ever seen. But what this icebergs on chart shows you will show you the exact amount. So you can see 3,000 traded here. This was one house that got executed. That's what the E is for 3,000 sell icebergs. They're not feeling very good right now, by the way. Um, but on the graph, it only showed you 2,500. So that just means that net net there was 2,500. But you can see one house took a stand here for 3,000 icebergs, right? So that's what this new iceberg indicator is. And I'll show you my settings for that. I just use, I mean, iceberg on chart. Um, the other thing too, I don't really want to get into this. It's pretty incredible. It's brand new. Bruce can get into this and his, his other things, but you can. So again, for people that have been on my webinars, I will say, um, well, let's use let's use NASDAQ as an example, right? So there's many days when NASDAQ, so in my course, my SI indicator course, I have thresholds for markets that what is a lot, what's a little, what do you pay attention to? What don't you pay attention to, right? So for instance, for ES, I pay attention to icebergs that are over 700. If I see an iceberg come in that's like 300, you know, like these little guys here, they, they look very minute with this big guy here. But like if you had the chart like this, I don't, this is not my, my threshold 700. So right here, you see this by iceberg. It, it, um, I mean, it happened to be in this zone from before that I drew where there was larger size. Um, but if I see this on its own, I, I'm not paying attention to it. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not a market moving uh, volume. Um, size, in, in my opinion. And again, I made this course last July with these uh, with these values, and I'm over a year and a half into trading this thing, and they're they are spot on as far as what's relevant and what's not. So, you know, so many people get the SI indicator and they're trying to take trades every time this thing spikes. You're, it's not relevant, right? It's relevant when it gets over, a certain, in my opinion, when when it gets over a certain amount. So for for ES, it's over 700 icebergs. It's over 500 stop runs, right? You know, if you see four, 480, 460, yeah. I mean, you, you and again, everything else is lining up. Then yes, you can you can use that as a threshold. But for the most part, you want to stay 500 for stops, 700 or more, 500 or more for stops, 700 or more. And you'll you'll see like stop runs of 1300. Then you know something really is going on. Or you'll see icebergs like we saw here. This is huge. My threshold 700. This is this is almost four times that right that's where you pay attention that's why i took this trade right um so anyway what i was saying is so nasdaq many days like my threshold in nasdaq in the course i think is like 120 and then but I, these recent webinars i say you know move that up to 150 but there's days one for, for i'm talking for ice first and stops actually but there's days where you'll see 150s fired off like you can see here look how many times 150s fired off today they're pretty close here's 150 this is 200 this is 180 Right, that was earlier in the day. So you need to you need to up on days that you keep seeing 180, 200, 180. You need to up your size to at least 180, or I mean your threshold up to 180, 200, because you don't want to see this thing fire off over your threshold 42 times in a day. It's not relevant. You want to see three, four, five times in a day it hits a certain level. So right now it looks like 200 is a very good level for icebergs. Let's see what stops stops are. Yeah, so look look how many times, so say we were using 120 as a threshold, you'd had 120 like 18 times already, right? Th th these are all over 250, these stop runs are over 200, that's 200, this is 200, this is almost 300, 200, 200, right? So today, you better not be using 120 as your threshold for stops, you've got to up, up that. So what I'm getting at is this new um, icebergs on chart, they have new settings in here where you can, this is pretty incredible. I have not used this like, you know, yet as far as really honing in on it, but so you can put in your thresholds you want. So this is, this shows me on the chart 150. So it'll pop up on the chart when 150 or more uh, fires off. But what you can do here is if you go automatic size threshold and then you put an interval, right? So this shows me the last 60 minutes, what's been, um, what's been a lot for stop runs, right? And then you can do a, st a standard deviation too. So you can see this grayed out, how it's moving around. So if I go one standard deviation in the last 60 minutes, what's been a lot for stop runs? It's only 15. So things are dying down right now. That That's what that tells me. But if I go, let's go um, 240 minutes. Actually, that goes back to the overnight trade. Let's go 120. 
Why is that only showing 13 though, Bruce? Any idea with all these 200 last stop runs? Uh, that's over the uh, last two hours um, that the, the um, standard deviation is 13. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, one, one, multi, one multiplier there. Well, this is uh, showing you that this is the average stop run, right? 13? That's correct. Yeah, see, that's what I don't understand because we've had, what I was just showing, we've had like 10. Well, no, that's, it's, it's not even, it's not even the average, it's, it's one standard deviation of it. Um, uh, yeah, go, go, the multiplier, take it to, yeah, I mean, it, it's, that's, and that's what it's calculating there. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's because you got two hours in there. I, I don't know. Okay, so anyway, that, that again, I don't use this yet, but it's just going to help you determine, hey, what, what's normal for today versus what I usually use, right? So right now, I'm basically just still using, I'll put in my my regular size, right, 150s for uh, icebergs and 150s for stops. There you go. Actually, I didn't want to do that. I want to do this. 115, 150 minutes. All right. So anyway, that's the icebergs on chart, right? So, and then I also have on here, this has been released, the hero indicator. That's a spot gamma indicator. We can put that on here too, what all this is showing you. Um, it's showing you the options dealers delta where, <clears throat> so again, I'm not the source for this. Go watch that. He just, he's just did a futures IO webinar with Bookmap last week. You can find that. Um, he's done multiple webinars, but this this is showing you net delta, meaning so if a if if, if a like a retail trader sells an option, then or buys an option, the dealer's on the other side, right? So they have they they're basically selling an option, so then they have to buy futures to hedge that option, right? So this is don't get, don't confuse yourself. The way this works, from what I've been looking at it and, and understood is if it's moving up, it's bullish. If it's moving down, it's bearish. So you're gonna see some really good setups where you'll see this the market's at highs and this thing is just crashing down. Again, because dealers are part of the, of the futures markets because they have to hedge their futures. You know there's been a ton of selling, so this move may be done <clears throat> type of thing. Again, that's another thing that I look at. Um, I, I'm brand new to that as well. I don't really I don't base my trading decisions off of it as of yet, but then you can also set up in, in that indicator you can set up, um, I just put this for so I didn't see a bunch of these, but watch if I put this at, uh, I'm going to make it at 500. You know, see all these triangles. So look at all these deltas that fired off. You can just see how many buy deltas, sell deltas. That's a little too low. Obviously, I, I don't want all that stuff on my chart. Um, so I made a 5,000, but that's too high. I'd say 1,000 is a good level. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. Thousands not too bad, where you can just kind of see. And you, again, guys, you can use this stuff as support resistance too, because if there was 2,000 deltas hedged here, you just know that there was participation in the futures market, and that you can use this stuff as support and resistance, right? Oh, by the way, was I stopped out on my uh, stopped out on my ES? Nope, still in it. So again, guys, yeah, I mean. Bruce, like what we talked about, I thought you wanted me to go through my day and no. what I look at. So I, yeah, I, absolutely. No mistakes. I, I, I'm sorry, no mistakes. Scott. Bookmap is the, most, is the number one thing I use. I was just trying to show how I analyze and get ready for my day. That's what I Yes, yeah, no, and, and, and uh, yeah, no, you, you, and you, you did, you did in detail. Um, uh, thank you. It, it, it's more, um, I, I just think it's so natural for you now um, using Bookmap. There's a lot of people, they're asking, what is an iceberg? Um, so, uh, is it to under, I mean, just in general, um, sometimes I, I can give a kind of an overview of what Scott's doing here. Um, yeah. And, that, and that's my fault too. So I'll go over icebergs. I, 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 no, again, no, I no, no worries. Thursdays, right. I do this every Thursday and it's usually for Bookmap Global Plus and most people know what they are. I keep forgetting this is a wide open webinar. So I will go over that quickly. So what an iceberg is, is so. They're hidden orders in the order book, right? So they're not, so you see right here, this is called the dome, stands for depth of market. These are the visible orders. So these are the people that wanna sell in the market. These are the people that wanna buy, right? And you can see it's mostly algos playing games. That's why it's flip flopping, flip flopping. This is what I used to trade off of. This is all I used to trade off of is this staring at this dome, trading off the way the orders would come in. 
you can't do that anymore because it's all algos and it's so fleeting and fast it's just worthless that's why this is so important now right um so what an iceberg is is a hidden order while i'm on this market and watching myself get stopped out here um a hidden order because think about it so these algos are are there's so many algos out there that are that are used they call it front running right so if they see so if i if i'm a big trader these days and i come in and i put a thousand lot in here as a bid they're gonna i just got stopped out by the way this should be this should be the end of this move and now it should do this by the way i don't know if you guys are seeing any of my webinars but anyway if i put a thousand lot in here this market will rip up um the algos will basically jump in front of me because they know I want to buy a thousand lot, right? And they're like, yeah, no, you're not going to buy a thousand lot here. We're going to run it in your face. And, we, and then we're going to put our offers up here. And we're going to watch you chase it and buy, buy it from us. And then we're going to, then we're going to push it right back down. Right? So that's why they don't, that's why you don't see any large size in here anymore. Cause if you put a big order in the order book, um, I mean, they're, they're, large size does come in, but I'm saying, you know, if I put it in right here, this thing, if I had a thousand lot to put on and I put it on right here, this thing would skip up like the eight ticks guaranteed. Right? So, Paper does not want that to happen. They want to get the best fill, so they have to put in an iceberg. What's an iceberg? An iceberg is where you have to display only a portion of it in the order book. It's like, say it's 10%, right? So if I have a thousand lot that I want to buy, all I have to do is put in the order book. That's actually, that's not an example. Let's say I have a thousand lot I want to buy. In the order book, I just have to show 100. So the market comes down, all happy. Oh yeah, we're going to drill this hundred lot. We're going to push this thing down, and they sell a hundred, and the market doesn't move. And they sell another hundred, market doesn't move. Another hundred, another hundred, another hundred, up to a thousand, right? So they're like, oh wait a second, that wasn't a hundred lot, that was a thousand lot. Oh now we got to peel out of these and get out, right? So that's what a, an iceberg order is—a hidden order that big money puts in the book because they can't, or puts in the in the um, market because they can't just flash it in the order book because the, the, the market will run away from the orders. So that's what an iceberg is. And then when you see huge size like this, it's usually very, very important um, as far as paper, big money taking a stand. And you saw an iceberg earlier, they took a stand and they got run over and then they just got run over again. But and again, like I said, look at the high tick of this move. Oh, that's my exact price. Um, but anyway, that was that's what icebergs are. They're just hidden orders in the order book. And it's very important to know that. If you guys don't know that, again, I say it all the time, you could be the best, you could be the best um technical chart guy on the planet as far as this is a head and shoulders, this is a or a candlestick guy, this is a doji, whatever 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 traders that don't succeed look at, right? Even if you're the best at this at reading this stuff which is this obviously is very powerful right because this is how i base my trading you still do not have all the information if you don't know what's going on real time it's very important to know hey there's someone trying to sell 2500 um two th three thousand icebergs here right and they just got run over hmm. well if they didn't hold the market do i really want to be a seller right now i probably want to be a buyer see how that works right so it's very it doesn't mean paper you're seeing a perfect example these icebergs aren't always right what's important is this area is what's important so you know from what from being on this webinar what you've seen today is two different times big money has come in oh by the way this is probably the same house and they're not feeling very good right now 3000 executed this is the icebergs on chart 3000 executed so somebody has sold 3,000, like literally one or two houses has sold 3,000 total icebergs in this area, and it's still moving away from them. That is something you probably want to know if you want to be short. So you need to say to yourself, hmm, well, there's 6,000 contracts that were sold as icebergs, and uh, it's still going up. Do I really, really want to be short right now? Absolutely not. If it does this and then gets through both of these zones, then you say, hmm, those icebergs were actually, they held the market. Do I want to be long right now? Absolutely not, because all of these guys that bought into these icebergs are going to now puke their positions. Kind of the same concept we talk with balance series, right? So this is why I don't care if you're the best chartist on the planet. You still don't have all the information. This is what you need to complete your the picture, complete the puzzle to be a successful trader. If you are not using this, I don't care if you're making money, you're going to make 10 times more money knowing what is going on real time, which is the most important factor, which is why book map is the most important piece of the puzzle. All right. Yeah, thanks, Question Scott. I mean, it, 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 it's not like the, a, a plug that or anything that, um, uh, uh, you know, I was um, 
I'm looking for. It, it was just an overview of your strategy of like um, just what you just covered uh, um, very, very nicely of looking at what larger players are doing real time uh, and then understanding like um, how that applies to your structure. So the, you're looking at the big event on the chart there of like, okay, these guys are, you know, the big event happened at, at that area at 4140 uh, and then earlier down at, uh, you know, 4134. Uh, and you're you're outlining those areas and now you want to see the price action around those areas uh, and, um, uh, and and then taking positions. Exactly. Just like you, just like you did. Right. So, right. And again, guys, if you think you're going to trade and you're going to make money every trade you put on, you're sadly, sadly mistaken. If you think you're going to be right 70% of the time, you're pretty sadly mistaken. You can be a 50% trader, right? Just like I just demonstrated to you, right? Let's use that last example. So I lost, say I lost seven points and I think it was seven points, right? Or six points. Say I lose six points, right? And then when I, when this does work, which happened many times in these webinars, and then you get the 40 point move, right? Again, like I said, so let's do it at 50%. So let's say I take six trades and I'm wrong three times and I'm right three times. Doesn't mean it's gonna go 40 points every time, right? Let's, but just, let's just use this as an example, right? Because again, I, I hope for 40 points, but say this starts ripping down and then I get a bullish signal on my SI, I will get out of that trade. Sometimes it ends up being a scalp, but I'm not trying to scalp. I hope that I hope that you guys can see the difference there, right? Sometimes this will start rolling down and it'll only be 10 points and all of a sudden I'll see a monster iceberg, I'm out of that trade, right? So I make 10 points. So let's just, but just for illustration purposes, let's pretend I took six trades, I lost six points each time that I was wrong and I made 40 points each time I was right. Well, this is not difficult math, right? I lost 18 points and when I was right, I made 120 points. That's being a 50% trade. So you see the power in when you put on trades, expecting, not that you just throw on a trade saying, I want 40 points out of this. I put on trades saying, based on what I'm seeing, this could and should, if this gets motor in the other way, this could and should be a 40 point move, right? It's it, That's the difference. It's not, I think I, I just put on a trade and I'm gonna hold it for 40 points. No, I know this is a very important area that this thing can reject and come all the way back down here. This could be a monster trade if this is the if this is the stopping point of this market, right? So that's how I trade. When I trade, I'm saying, okay, this is a very important area. I know this. I know we're struggling to get still struggling to get into this into this market profile. Let's make this bigger so you can see, right? I still will go short if I get another signal. If we if we get back out of this guy, I got to fix this value area. Um, it's I'm still going to take another short. But again, I'm taking this, what am I doing here? Because I think if this fails, there we go, <clears throat> this can turn around and be a mammoth short. If it does this and gets back out of here, I will take another short if I see something. And I think this can go at least down to here, maybe even down to here. So even down to here, which we basically opened up, this is where we opened right at the bottom here. This would still be a 25 point trade. So I'm risking six points to make 25. That's four, four, over four times my risk, right? That's what I'm That's what I'm thinking could happen based on everything I'm talking about. It's not, I'm just gonna put on a trade and hope I get 25 points. I'm saying, no, this is a very important area. If I'm right, especially with this volume that's coming in here, right? So this is one or, things gonna one or two things are gonna happen right now. This is either gonna stop they're going to try to stop this one more time, or this thing is going to rip probably 30, 40 points because all these guys right now are holding their breath. These these 3,000 icebergs, they're in big trouble. So now what happens? If you want to be long, these are the areas that you get long. You don't need to chase this market. What you need to do because paper so many times, the big money just magically finds a way to get the orders or the market back to where they got caught so they can, like we talked about earlier, so they can cover. So this is the pattern, right? So say you're like, Scott, I don't like, I don't like your thesis for today, I wanna be long. Fine, it's your money, it's your, it's your brain, you think whatever you wanna think. If you wanna be long, this is what you wanna see. This is iceberg that got crushed. This is an iceberg that got huge. This is one iceberg, two different times. Again, by the size, it looks like it's one house. So let's pretend it's one house. One, one house got run over for 3,000 icebergs there. Again, don't be fooled by where it's labeling it. If you look at it, there's lines. You see this line? 
<clears throat> this is really interesting too, right? Let me get this piano off here real quick. So Bruce, Bruce loves when I do this. He just loves spreading out these to see the, how the iceberg, see how he says how fascinating it is. But you can see here, look how this happened. And Bruce can jump in if he wants, but this, <laughs> I do this, love detected, it, yeah. this is his favorite part of the, <laughs> of the icebergs. <laughs> so you can see it detected 100. More buyers came in. Oh, here's another 1,100. More buyers came in. Oh, here's another hidden 1,200. More buyers came in. Then it equaled all of these, and you can see the line, see the black line? It's just showing you. So again, the icebergs didn't happen where this is labeled. It happened where this black line goes to. And, and these squares are absorption indicator. I mean, it's, that's another thing. That's not that's not associated with this icebergs on chart, but it's just showing you more absorption. Absorption just means passive sellers, like they're in the order book, they're getting their orders taken. They're not going to the market, they're getting them taken. That's what absorption is. But anyway, I'm talking about this, right? So these lines are showing you like this bubble detected 100 out of this iceberg. And Bookmaps programmers, quants, they're so incredible with what they've, so they're using, this uses the CME MBO data because everyone asks this, right? This is enhanced data. Go to the CME website quickly because I do this every single time. You need to go to the CME website, make sure you do this, just so you guys can read about it and know what you're, what you're dealing with. MBO data, right? It tells you. Market by order. This is enhanced data. You can read the benefits, increased transparency, blah, blah, blah. Icebergs, order IDs, right? So there's actual order IDs on icebergs that the bookmap developers have learned how to read that and stop runs. Everyone knows what a stop run is. If you ever put a trade on, you better know what a stop run is because that just means you're putting in a, an order where you're automatically going to get out if you're wrong, right? I'll get into those here in a second. But anyway, this CME MBO data is how they're able to determine these icebergs with 100% accuracy. So you can see, not only are they able to see the icebergs, they're able to see it's one iceberg. That That's pretty incredible, important information, right? So anyway, started out, detected D, 100, transaction, another 1,100, transacted, 1,200, they were finally executed total between all of these guys, equaled 3,000, right? That's one house that's doing that, right? That's important to know. How did that work out for them? Not real good. Then came up here, same exact thing. Let's look at this. Here you go. How cool is this to see this stuff? It's incredible. Nobody knows this, guys. You're literally like 1% of all traders even know Bookmap exists. It's going to get, trust me, it's going to ex ex explode. It, it has to. But people don't even know this know this information. Don't you think this is important to know? Hey, wow, this is one out. 1,300, another 800, another 300 executed 3000 all in this zone so there's been two monster icebergs that have been run over in this area so what i'm trying to say is now that you know that they are in deep 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 trouble so the usual pattern is it'll move away it'll come back here because they because they're so big are they coming in here again looks like it okay but either any, either way the usual pattern is it comes back to the area and what did i tell you earlier this would used to be me when i would sell 2000 contracts it would rip in my face i'd be praying to the lord to come back i would get out when it came back so if you are looking to get long i wouldn't be buying up here i would wait for retests of these zones retest failure you start to see the blue bubbles come in meaning market buyers you get in stock can go below here that's one area if you want to get long here's the other if you want to get long right both these areas if you have a long thesis are incredible areas to get long because these guys are in serious serious trouble right? If this just keeps like crawling up, they're eventually going to have to puke. This is 6,000 contracts. Look at the book. There's probably not 6,000 contracts in the entire order flow book both ways, right? So that's a lot of contracts. They are in some serious pain right now. Don't you think you should know that? If you're looking at this chart by yourself, so and Q stuff going off, I'll go to that in a second. If you're just looking at this, you're like, oh, this is a great short, man. I, I'm a great chart reader. I know this is going to fail and this is going to do this. No. Yeah, that's why I originally traded off of, and I was wrong, but now you know, mm, let's see, yeah, there's, uh, so 6,000 contracts tried to stop this market. Why do I think this market is going to stop right here, right now, right? Again, if we get below both of these, if this somehow, whoever's stepping up here, again, you can see more icebergs coming in. If they win, and then we get below this, and then this, then yes, then it's going to be, we're going to sell up. But as of right now, you have to stay bullish based on what you're seeing. These guys are not winning. So I hope that is clear. Any questions, Bruce, on that? 
No, listening. no, I, you, you gave a very good overview of, of what you're looking at and, and, and how, how you're trading around it. Uh, and, and, uh, that, that was all I was trying to, trying to get at, uh, earlier. Um, the, um, answering a lot of questions in here about icebergs, et cetera. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Um, so it's basically that zone. So this is the newest iceberg zone with another, you can see there's another, you can see it on the graph here. This was look down on my bottom left. Bruce, how do I get that floating little window guy up? It doesn't come up anyway anymore for me. Where I, uh, where I hover over hover over the iceberg. I, I can see it down on the bottom left there, but I there used to be like a little window that would pop up. I don't get that anymore. Do they take that away or something? Um that's really oh no, it's the uh, in between the um the drawing tool there and the the one right after um the drawing tool. Yeah, that that's oh, that the little okay. window. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I wonder where that went. So you can see here this was another thousand icebergs sell icebergs hidden hidden orders trying to stop this market are they going to finally win it doesn't look like it they couldn't win with 3000 again this is showing net net but you can see it here they couldn't win with 3000 they couldn't win with 3000 if this is the same house they've got some serious cojones pardon my language for you women out there but i mean it's going to be short a total of you know 8000 contracts how's that going to work out when they puke and it'll move this market 40 points probably so if you're long, you're loving it right now. You're like, yeah, you got that. And again, this other stuff we look at. Remember Algo guy? Algo guy is saying, yeah, stay long, man. This is we're going higher. We're just gonna, we're just gonna hug this blue line for another hundred points. Nice. Um, and then the other stuff. Again, now we're inside of. We're inside of. Now this is where I may change my tune on a pullback, right? Because why? Well. We were shorting earlier because I was thinking it was going to stall here and I had help. I thought I had help. I thought those icebergs would hold the market. No, now they're in big trouble. So if this thing pulls back to the bottom of this, which is going to be confluent with that second iceberg zone, I'm going to I'm going to take a long. I'm going to take a shot because these icebergs are in big trouble. Right? Doesn't mean I'm chasing yeah. here. I will wait for a pullback to this zone here, which is right at the bottom of that market profile I just showed you to go long. So a, a few questions uh, to answer really quickly. Um, uh, the um, it's MBO data, market by order data. We know uh, uh, it's just more metadata, and we know for fact that they're either buyers or sellers. Uh, due to what was Scott Scott was showing there from the CME, uh, there's iceberg IDs in there. You you can read about. Um, and um, uh, let's see. Um, again, it, it it's about um, the event here and then scott is looking at after that event what is you know the the sentiment um uh and uh, buying and selling after a significant event has unfolded uh in this case you know the 3000 icebergs right so, so yeah, this uh, is one market right and we got another uh barrage here or tranche um all right, so here, here's an example from now. Now we'll get into stop runs, right? So this is, and you can see the stop runs on the chart and on the graph, right? So the stop run was big for, this was above threshold for gold. Gold is like 120 in my course, right? So you had a stop run of 235 here and then another 100 here. So there's, I didn't draw this zone. I drew this zone based on this guy here, not on this guy here, but it did go up a little higher as you can see on the chart. They're just showing you stop runs on the chart, right? Net, net stop runs. When you see when you condense it, that's when you get this this spike here. This is the zone I drew, right? So stop runs are usually the retail trader, which I call dumb money. Again, I'm a retail trader too. Don't be offended. We are not as informed as these big hedge funds, these big quant funds, right? So it's just dumb money, smart money. That's the way I refer to it. Usually, almost always, these stop runs are dumb money. So there's two different setups in my course that I talk that helps you determine how the stop runs are gonna, how the markets can react to the stop run. And there's a dumb and dumber, meaning the dumb money puked out their positions. You can see this big buying, that's just a puke signified by that, and then it fails, right? That's one, so this looks like it was a dumb and dumber, at least temporarily. Again, gold is pretty bullish, so the, these even though the setups work, they're pretty short-lived. I mean, this was 30 plus ticks here, you can see, and now we're retesting the zone again, and it looks like it's gonna fail again. Again, these zones are so powerful just to know where stuff fired off. 
Then there's a, there's a trade. Let's see if I can find one. I'm sure I could find one in uh, Nat. Let's just draw a zone here in NASDAQ. Oh, by the way, this how's this size doing? This sell is doing too. <laughs> Someone's going to be losing a lot of money today, I can tell you that. Um, so here's, here's NASDAQ. Let's find a, let me get this hero off here because I can't distinguish the colors. There we go. Let's find a stop and hold here. So you can see here, we had a stop run of 173 and of 211. You can see, look at looking on the chart here. Let's, let's use this one. See how this worked out. Yeah. So let's let's incorporate both of these stop runs in the in this in this zone that we're going to draw here. So again, guys, don't be confused. Like I get all this all the time. Like I couldn't follow your your hand on your mouse, and the cursor's everywhere. This is me just trying to position my chart. So only time you need to be paying attention is if I'm using the drawer, right? Or if I'm drawing a zone. Other than that, don't like be flustered trying to watch this hand. I'm just trying to I'm trying to get my chart position. Okay. So. This is how I draw zones. You find where, where the market spiked. You see the spike of the stop run right here. You can see the buying right there, right? Make sure you expand your chart so you cover all the prices. You can see it started right here. There's the spike. See the vertical line, my, my cross here started there. That's the bottom. That's how I'm gonna draw that zone, right? Now we're gonna find where it ended, but I'm gonna incorporate both those stop runs. So I'll show you this here, right? So that went all the way up to here, you can see, right around 4, 422-ish, right? And then that held, and then another one came in. So I'm gonna, there's basically back to back, so I'm gonna incorporate this. Now look at this one, right? So I'm gonna make this one big zone. I'm gonna put the top of this zone here, because this is where it, I think it stopped. Might have to change that. There you go. So that incorporated both these stop runs. So let's make this thicker just so everyone can see. This is a large zone, remember, because I, I incorporated two stop runs, but sometimes you got it, it is what it is. It's you know, it's what it was, so that's what we're putting in here. So make that 10. And we'll make this 10. There you go. So that's the zone. This wasn't even that big. I mean, this is actually for two stop runs to, to only span nine points. That's nothing. I mean, we have we have zones where I see 40, 50, 50 points in NASDAQ. So anyway, this is what you call a stop and hold. So we just looked at Dumb and Dumber, right? This was Dumb and Dumber setup, one of my five setups. Dumb money, puke, wrong. And I even tried to retest again right now, wrong again. Okay. Again, this is all in a vacuum, guys. It doesn't mean get short this market. I'm just showing you how these zones work, right? This was a stop and hold. What do we get? We got a dumb money puking, but guess what? It held its own. It peaked out a little bit. This is nothing. This is three points. We give it 10 points below to, to invalidate this zone. This is just a little blip. Gone. So when it, this, this is a call to stop and hold setup where the dumb money pukes, but it holds the zone, and then the, the big money comes in and powers it and keeps it going. That's all that is. Right, and then you see another stop run. It looks like another stop and hold, or even even if this was a dumb and dumber, it came right back. Look, look how powerful these zones are. So if you miss the long, right? So you can you can trade these zones one of two ways. The minute they break out, you can get long, like right here. You can say, okay, I'm getting long, or you're like, darn, I missed it. Okay, well, then you wait for it. Look at this, pull back exactly the zone, failed, gone. You, you, once this comes back here, you wait to see the market buying out of the zone, right there blue bubble, you get long with it, your stop goes 10 points below the zone, boom. You've already got 25 points in your in your favor, close to it, it was 25 points here in a second. What's the other thing I look at? Liquidity, what's liquidity? Large orders in the order book just displayed graphically on the heat map, that's all it is. Liquidity is big money that puts their orders in and the market gravitates to that big money every time, why does it gravitate? Well, because the big money pushes it to their orders. That's why it gravitates. How do I know this? Because I used to play this game all the time as a big scalper. I would put in above the market. I'd put in like a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, right? And we'd be down here. Again, this is ES. I didn't trade the NASDAQ back then. <clears throat> and I would start buying. I'd buy like 100. I'd buy 200. I'd buy 300. Then I'd wait and see how the market reacted. And it would just sit there. 
right? And I'm like, okay, I'll buy more. I buy 300, buy 400. And then it would start a flurry of buying because people would think, oh, wow, someone big's coming in here and they'd jump on my coattails. Then I then I just then I'd really lay on and I'd have max size on and the market would just rip right at, right into my resting orders and I get filled on all three thousand offers and I'd be done. That's exactly what games are being played in this market. Again, I tell my trading room every day, you can either get mad at the manipulation or what's what's the saying? If you can't beat them, join them. If you know what they're doing, you're not going to get mad at it. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna savor it and wait for it. That you're seeing right now. Hey, wow, we're going to go right into that. Why? Because they're going to push it into because they're the big money. They put their orders in and then they wait for their opportune time and then they start buying with a flurry and it pushes it right into their waiting offers and then they're out. Boom. And it goes on. I can't. We saw one yesterday. It was so, or the day before, it was so egregious and Russell. It was ridiculous. I think it was yesterday. It, it looked like this. Like, and Q stops 118.95. There we go. Oh, look at that. They got filled. Who knew? Who knew? I'll draw that zone here in a second, but the, the liquidity literally looked like this. I mean, it, was, it was so egregious. It was, it was like this huge, huge band of red, another huge band of red, another huge band of red. And we were like up here and I'm like, all right. And we were retesting a, a zone. I'm like, I don't really like the short here from a structure standpoint, but I know we're retesting the zone. Like we had a, a, a broken ice zone, a buy ice that got ripped and then it came back and then it failed. And I'm like, and then, you know, where we're going guys, we're going straight to this liquidity. And I'm not kidding you, within five minutes, straight down, filled, 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 paper gets their way as usual. Again, if you can't beat them, join them. How do you know any of that if you're just staring at a bar chart, if you're just staring at Fibonacci levels, if you're just staring at MACDs, you don't. That's why book map is the most powerful thing that's not even using the SI indicator. That's just using their basic software that I, that's all I used when I first started with Bookmap and I thought it was the greatest thing on the planet. And now they just keep adding more and more and more. It, 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 I liken it, I, I tell people this all the time. It's like, I, you know, once I started going downhill as a scalper, you know, as a trader, you never give up. You're like, oh, I'll figure it out. So that was, I would jump from firm to firm. And I, I spent a year at a firm called Wolverine Trading. Uh, where they're more like quant and they're still around. And, um, you know, they built, they're like more quant traders, like basically what we're fighting with the algos now. But anyway, they were trying to trying to automate what I would see trading as a scalper. Uh, but they would come up to me every week and say, hey, we got this new this new uh, tool, this new indicator, you want to try it? I'm like, sure. Next week, hey, we got this new indicator, you want to try it? Sure. This is exactly what you guys are getting from Bookmap. It's like your own personal quant fun that is giving you these tools to like, like wow that's incredible yeah no i don't like that one as much but i love this one it's it's unbelievable you guys this is the most powerful i've been trading please please i have a little bit of experience trading right from good and bad this I, when i tell you this is the most powerful thing you can ever use in your trading trust me it's the most powerful thing you can ever use in your trading period and any other program out there these other there's a couple other ones out there they're they're just like they make they're like Bookmap is them on steroids, right? That claim that they're, and they're not, and the thing is they're not using CME MBO data and things like that. It's like, it's a joke. This is this is the best platform you can possibly use to understand what's really going on in this market. Oh, and what's this, by the way? Anybody know? Let's, uh, let's see if we get some answers in the room. What, what setup is this? We just talked about it. Here, I'll draw the zone for you. Started there. You wanna incorporate all the prices that happened in that zone, right? Let's spread this out quickly. <clears throat> Let me see if you guys can tell me what setup this is. Because I just taught it to you. you like if I if you're in my room right now and I ask a question and you don't answer correctly, then you get a verbal lashing. Again, it's half funny, but a lot of times not because I don't like talking to myself and explaining things and then people not understanding what I'm saying or remembering what I'm saying. What is this? What's this setup called? Anyone? Bueller? Tell me again the answers, Bruce. What's this? Setup? Uh, no one wants to. to... <laughs> Are you kidding me? I just no, no, explained no, the setup. No, no. Rob says dumb and dumber. No, a dumb and dumber is when you get the stop run, the dumb money, and then they're wrong. Sorry, Sorry Rob. This I don't mean to stop. mention that. Uh, okay, here, we're broken ice. No. Uh, stop and hold. Well, you guys are all you guys are all in the doghouse, all of you. You're all banned from my trade room. Just kidding. <laughs> this is a stop. This is not ice. Where do you see ice here? This is, see the orange? Even I can see the orange and I'm colorblind. This is a stop run. 200 plus, look at it right there. And it's showing you on the chart as well. What did it do? Did it fail as a dumb and dumber? D and D as we call it? No, it is a stop. Here's your stop. Again, guys, this stuff is really complicated the way I've labeled them too. Like iceberg, 
yeah, it's basically, I call it a Titanic. It's like a and Q minus 118.95. We're running into an iceberg, right? That that's I'll I'll show you the Titanic stuff. But this is a stop run. There it is. And hold this area. See this zone? It held. Stop and hold. Right. So oh, the way God. you play this is you wait for it to. You can either get in immediately as soon as it breaks the zone. Your stop goes about 10 points below. Because you want, again, these thinner traded markets tend to flip around, right? So you want to give it a little room below the zone. And again, this was another tiny zone. So this is only 11 points. You risk even 10 points below, you're only risking 20 points. This this is probably going to end up being like a 60, 80, 80 point run. So we did that. So you can either wait for it to do this or you wait for a move away and then a retest. Usually I want to see 10 points, but here's, the, here's what I tell my room too. It's like, you have to determine as a trader how aggressive you want to be. Do you want to take, do you want to be aggressive? Again, this is how you determine how you're aggressive. You look at your charts and say, hey, do I want to wait and hope this market retests this zone? Because so many times the market will do this, kind of like I just showed you here earlier, right? I said, if you miss it the first time, you had a chance, another chance to get in. So that was this right here. Perfect example, right? So do you take this this first stop and hold? This is the one we just talked about that no one obviously was listening when I explained it. Do you take it when we first break out? Or do you wait for a retest? We did retest, and then there's another chance to get long. The problem is, if you wait for retests, sometimes it does not retest. So like this one we're in right now, it hasn't really retested. Again, I look for it to go 10 points and retest. This thing, once it got 10 points above the zone, so we're saying 65, this has not come back. It still could come back, but this may just rip off the page, and you're just sitting here saying, oh, man, I was waiting for a retest, and that didn't happen. So again, as a trader, you have to determine, do I want to be aggressive? the second it breaks out of the zone or do I want to wait for a retest? I'm going to go. Again, you're not always going to get the retest. We had, again, I keep referring to the room because that's all I'm ever doing. Um, I had a Russell trade. This was a couple weeks ago. This exact look, it was actually broken ice. And I'm like, I'll wait for a retest and I did this. And then it just, and then it went up like 200 ticks and I got nothing. And I just got to sit there and watch it. So again, you have to determine what, how you want to trade it. Oh, by the way, how is this, um, how's this ice doing? The cell ice, are they doing pretty well today? They're getting, crushed crushed so usually there's another example usually you get the retest of these zones this thing hasn't even retested these guys here, here's 3000 yum how did that taste you did get a little retest here this one no this one no i'll tell you right now there's a couple houses on 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 the planet that are that are not going to have a good day today so there you go you remember what i said if we break the once I said, once we get above here, this is probably going to run to the other end of that market profile, right? And now you got the fuel. You know there's been so much broken ice, 9,000 contracts have broken ice, basically. This thing is it's gone. We're, I mean, if this has any pullback, I will be clicking my heels. So if we can do one of these and pull back to the bottom of this and back into that ice, I will go along with both hands, as they say. But it looks like we're just going to do a straight shot right here. So again, that's where you have to determine based on what you're seeing. So say, okay, I love market profile. All right, I know, I know we got into this February finally after struggling. Now I saw broken ice three times. I'm not waiting for any pullbacks. When I see it break these zones, I'm in. And you would have, you know, again, if you waited for pullbacks, this is the only one you really got a pullback on, this one. This one once it broke above, it didn't, it never pulled back. And this one never pulled back. And this is, we're talking, we're going on almost 30 points. Isn't this important to know, guys? Again, I took one short and I said, okay, yeah, that's enough for me, right? Because, so say you're just looking at, you're just looking at the bar chart and you're like, well, wait a minute. No, this thing has to stop. Like this can't go up any higher. We're, let me find my chart. Like, wait, this, this, this can't, this can't be. Like, this is gonna stop now. We're right into this, we're right into this balance area that we broke down from. Like. Okay, I got I stopped. I'm gonna keep getting short, right? You, okay, you're playing out this. You're getting short. You're getting your head handed to you. If you just know this information, you're like, well, why, why is this not turning around? When you know this information, you know exactly why it's not turning around. Because paper got killed. They're wrong, wrong, wrong. This is now them puking out. Is what it is. Do you want to go short that? Looking at a bar chart, you may say, hey, I want to go short. Knowing this information, you're like, there's no way I'm going short. I'm looking for long opportunities if, if we do pull back to these zones, which probably is not going to happen now because these guys are in serious, serious pain. And now you're going to see, now you're probably going to see some huge stop run too. 
Right, right on the nose. Hey, we're going to get another stop and hold on Q. That'd be shocking. I mean, that's it's quite a move. Um, <laughs> yeah. Again, just just look here, guys. So if I if I was taking these longs from here, I could have got long on this stop and hold. Right. Let's just let's just play this out as as it's just happened. Right. Again, we were I was showing all this other stuff, so we missed these potential trades. Right. But it is what it is. So I'm just showing you for you guys. Again, this webinar is to teach you and not to not to mirror my trading anyway. Right. So here's a stop and hold. This is the first one we talked about. You can get in there or wait for the retest. You're long. Now you get another one. Now what you do as we break the zone, you get in another position. And then now, remember your stop was down here for this first zone, 10 points below. Now you can move this stop up 10 points below this zone. And then your position, the new position you put on goes in the same spot. So now you got two positions on. You're guaranteed profit on this first one. Right. Then what happened? Now we're up here. Then you got two positions on. This was another stop run here. See what this one was. See if we could add it to this. They're always perfect when I'm not when I'm not trading them, by the way, especially the adding and everything else. That's where I would have added this every time. If I'm not trading them, it's like there's no heat. It's just perfect. Just goes, goes, goes. So here's the next one. So what would you have done here? You can see this is where this stopped right here. What's this? Another stop and hold. Right, you got three stop and holds. So now you can add in another position. You get in, here's the retest. That wasn't 10 points, but say you got in on the first break. You now you say you hit trading four lots. You got in four there. The first zone was down there, way down there. Let me let me quickly draw this out for you to show you how you could have just made a month making day right here. Right? First trade. You got in four right here. Stops down here. Here's the next zone. You got in another four. You trailed your stop up based on structure, not because you didn't want to lose money. Now you have a stop for four and four, two positions. Now here's another stop and hold. Now you get in another four. Now you, now you move these stops up 10 points below that zone. Now you have three positions. And if this keeps going, you're going to have a month making, year making day. If it comes back, fine. You lost on this first, on this one you just added, but you made money on that one and you made money on this one. It's, guys, it's the most powerful thing you can ever use in your trading, guys and girls, for the one millionth time that I've said that. All right, Bruce, I'm a little out of gas here. <clears throat> oh, no, 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 wor no worries. Uh, you've been going for uh, an hour and uh, almost 40 minutes. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, just uh, reading through a couple questions here. Um, just a second here, a couple longer ones. Um, quickly, the new Lud Ludwig, we call them lugs, these levels that I showed you guys earlier. This is the target now, right? You're going to be amazed. Like, this thing will probably come right to this to this level. Once we cleared this, we drew this dynamically. We drew them. We got above this resistance from earlier. We were talking about this earlier. And then we get this yellow drew, stayed above that. You watch. This is exactly where we're going. These things, my, the one guy has been telling me for a year how powerful these levels are. And I'm, I've am i been only watching it for two days and I'm a believer. Again, I'm not using these as in a vacuum, but I'm using these with everything else that I'm doing. Number one, book map, and then just using this. So, so say for instance, we come all the way up here and then I get a book map um, sell signal. I will sell that up there because I got that and I got book map right on top of my structure stuff. So. All right, fire away, Bruce. What are the questions? Um, I, well, I, I, I think, um uh let's see geo um is asking about thresholds those are all in scott's um uh, course uh and um you know he developed the trading plan around those uh, so you might want to reach out uh specifically about those um whatever instrument that you're trading but um, um yeah i mean you can see what he's looking at here for um the nq and uh and the es uh and uh let's see about uh data uh for stops and icebergs it's only going to work with uh rhythmic you will need to have rhythmic they're the only data providers that provide market by order data at this time yeah you get rhythmic through the bookmap marketplace uh or most brokers have it as well so. most brokers have it you, you can you can uh, uh call up your broker and then you can trade right from the bookmap chart uh, with with Global Plus, but and then you can also attend these these advanced webinars. But uh, uh, anyway, or you can get it from uh, the marketplace if you like, if you don't have that option 
uh, from your from your broker. Um, okay, I, I think that's about it, uh, Scott. So um, yeah, if I didn't get to, there's other questions here. If I didn't get to them, um, you, please reach out to Scott directly. Uh, yeah, you know, I put the email and um, everything in here. Uh, you've got links to his his content, his website, his room, uh, etc. It's all all in there. So, um, um, oh, I think uh, I think that's it. I mean, this is hysterical. Like I totally, if I was watching this, one, this is another stop button you can add. Now you'll have like four positions on. But the other thing too that we didn't even cover, we weren't even look at. I kept looking at the ES market profile. I look at this, right? So <clears throat> quickly, once we got out of this guy, you could have been looking long because the tendency is to go when you break out of one value area is to go to the next one, right? Composite, and then. What we did is when we got up here, this is when all those stop and holds started firing off. Now we're inside this one. You can be adding, and guess where we're going? Right here. Look at this level. Right around there is the top. What's what? What else is that? What I just showed you. Again, that's how you use everything in conjunction, right? It's this level. Right there, same exact spot. So you can bet we're going up to that price. If I had to place a bet, which I will do with my trades, hopefully I'll get a chance to get long this still. Um, but anyway, you're using this context, right? And then when you start to see the real-time volume confirm it, you're in. And you would have been in three different times, now four. This is another stop run. Let's draw this in real quick just so you guys can see it. Use this, right? This one's 300. Remember, threshold's like 150 usually. This is another 300 stop runs. This is just guys puking, but it's holding every one of them. Let's draw this real quick, and then we'll hop off here. And again, this is the stuff I do in my room every day. Like, this is how you learn this stuff. You get in there and they they watch this and, you know, then they take positions. And if they're wrong, they get verbal lashings. But when they're right, they get they get gold stars. This is another stop and run. Look at this. Pupe. Hold. You can be long right now. This is, what, the fourth position now. Now you trail all your other your three position stops that you were just in. They all come 10 points below this zone. Now you have another one on. So now you have four stops right here because you added another one. If this goes again, hey, look what's up here. I wonder if they're going to get filled here. Then you catch this. Now, again, this is this was a, a at least a month-making trade, which you strive for, right? So look where that started back down here. Look at, look at how much kind of move this was off of this very first zone down here. This is 70 points and counting. You were risking, remember I said how small this zone was? You were risking less than 20 points on this zone. Let's just get an exact number to show you, right? So we, yeah, so this is 10 points. You say you're risking 20 points. You already have almost four times your money on just one position. Then you added, then you added, and it's still going. This is what you strive for as a trader, right? The trading is about kind of losing a little, making a little, losing a little, break even, lose a little, make a little, and then you catch this type of trade and you make your month or your year, and then you do it over again, then you do it over again. And then you have maybe in a year, you maybe have 10 outsized days and that makes your entire year, right? This is what you, guys, I'm telling you, if you don't have this information, you just don't, you don't have all the data, you just don't. And you're, and you're trading blind in my eyes. So use my 20 plus years experience to help you understand that you have to have this stuff to compete. If you don't have it, you're, you're, you just don't have all the data. That'd be like going in your car and driving without a speedometer. How's that gonna work out sometimes? Not very good. Or brakes, let's use brakes as a, as a better example. <coughs> all right, Bruce, I'm out of gas. All right, all right, well, uh, just, um, uh, uh, note uh, the um, all the all the contact information is in there uh, if you want to reach out to Scott um, and uh, any of you masochists out there um, should join his uh, his trading room uh, if you like the verbal lashing. Um, <laughs> you like verbal lashing, but yeah. it'll make you a better trader. That's why I tell him every day. It's like it's <laughs> it's going to make you a better trader. I'm not here to sugarcoat things for you. I'm here to tell you how it is. I'm here to tell you that you suck right now and you'll get better, <laughs> but you got to listen and learn. And the whole goal of the room is to make, you know, proficient, self-sufficient, lethal traders. That's the goal. That's what I want to do. And I love teaching. And that's the goal of the room. So when you make a mistake, be ready to be ripped. But they all take it in stride and they're all learning. That's the most important thing. <clears throat> Look at this. Hey, how did that? Hey, Bruce, I just want to tell you like basics. Like 
Hey, question, how, how's this ice doing here, this cell ice? Are they doing pretty good here? Hi, this is, uh, this how's is that working quite, out for them? This is quite a run. Um, yeah, and, they're, and they, they're, they're, they're picking yeah, up 9,000 contracts. That's why it's quite a run. Yeah, and they're continuing. Um, you know, look at just it goes going against some another five hundred, another five hundred, seven fifty. Imagine if you have to if you have to get out of nine thousand contracts, like how hard that is going to be with this with this size in the order book. I mean, that's just uh, that's why you're seeing this move. Unbelievable, best thing on the planet, guys. I'm telling you, this SI indicator is the, is the most powerful thing I've ever seen. Follow my Twitter too. I put in I always put in examples, and I, I say on every Twitter post. The most powerful in all caps thing I've ever seen, SI indicator. There you go. Okay. Well, um, uh, I think uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, Platoon Sergeant uh, Pulsini, uh, uh, David is saying, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, take, taking, uh, taking the lashing there. Um, so I, I think that that's. Uh, well done. We we see uh, quite a move here, and uh, look at these icebergs just uh, all all the way through. Uh, pretty pretty amazing. Um, so uh, no, no no more questions, uh, Scott. But uh, uh, thank you thank you very much for the uh, for the presentation. Sure. Um, the next one, next special one we do, I'm going to try to uh, pull up some of my old video. I was going to do it on this one, but I, I, just, I didn't have time to go search through my all my old stuff. But I'll have some video of me trading, kind of like I was showing you how I used to. Put in my orders and then play the game. So you, you guys, will, you'll see it firsthand. It's pretty, pretty comical. I might have to mute it because there's some uh, not for kids language most days that I was trading. But other than that, it should be very enjoyable for guys. We have, to put in, we have to put in beeps uh, for it. Right. Or something. Well, it would yeah. just be all. It would be one continuous beep. Then it would just be like this <laughs> the whole time. Because <laughs> I would have to talk to myself so my head wouldn't fly off. And then when I was talking to myself, it usually was not. Pleasant, pleasant talk. Is uh, is Doctor Steen Steenbarger in there as well? Um, some of them he was, yeah. Oh, he, wow. That's how when he wrote the book and hands and trader performance, he sat behind me for a year because he yeah. wanted to see how I, what I was doing, how I was doing it. So yeah, there's some in there. A lot of them him talking me off the ledge, which is pretty <laughs> funny too. Wow, that's pretty. At least I was kidding funny. too. But I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Scott. Um, if uh, any more questions, uh, you know, follow up uh, with uh, you know uh, support at bookmap.com or reach out to Scott directly there, uh, and uh, we're we're happy to help you out. So uh, yeah, thanks again, and um, uh, we'll we'll catch up with you later. Uh, I guess uh, next next Thursday, Scott. Awesome, Bruce. Thanks for having me, and uh, see you next week. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye.